So, dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the side event, Communicating Climate Change and the Post-2015 Agenda, the 2015 Global Challenges Youth Music Contest as an instrument for highlighting youth climate action through music. The organizers of uh, this side event uh, are, uh, main organizer is uh, Association Action Hospital pour le Développement Durable. Uh, uh, Jean-Paul is Afana, is also the founder and CEO of this organization and also head of our youth programs at IAI. Uh, and this, uh, brings us to the co-organizers and partners of the event. Uh, one is International Association for the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges, represented by me, and uh, UNESCO Management of Social Transformation Program, and the Citizens Climate Lobby, represented by Joe Robertson. So, the um, main topic of today's side event is that um, uh, we have uh, this uh, huge negotiations and COP21 in front of us and uh, this, in order to be successful, will uh, need to uh, have bold political decisions, uh, really also very ambitious action levels and this need requires that uh, the, this topics, climate change uh, and uh, global challenges in general, need to, book, to be understood by the citizens all around the world and especially uh, by the young uh, generation which will have to take up this new thinking of global social responsibility and uh, uh, climate action taken by everybody. And the question is how to bring this to the awareness of the people, how to get people engaged and our approach that we want to present here today is the Global Youth Music Contest um, and we have uh, the plan uh, to combine the online competition uh, with a huge globally broadcasted TV uh, gala uh, show uh, during COP21 in Paris and uh, this uh, side event here uh, builds on the outcomes of COP21 Youth and Media Alliance Building Workshop which was held on the 24th of April 2015 at UNESCO headquarters in Paris. And uh, this event will also serve as the basis for the launch of uh, the 2015 Global Challenges Youth Music Contest during this Bonn Climate Change Conference at a press conference on the 3rd of June at 9.30 a.m. and you are all kindly invited to uh, join us at that event too. The agenda of this side event, uh, I will have a brief introduction, then uh, we will hear also from Adriana Valenzuela Jimenez, uh, from UNFCC Secretary from the unit uh, Article 6 of the Convention, Education, Training and Public Awareness from the Communications and Outreach Program, how our activities fit into the global, uh, the broader context of uh, UN uh, FCCC Secretariat's work and outreach activities with youth. We will hear from John Crawley how uh, these uh, plans uh, are aligned with the different uh, processes on uh, the level of United Nations but also with COP21 host country. We will have a video message from Mike Mullane, the head of the Eurovision Social Media Department of European Broadcasting Union in which uh, he will uh, briefly speak about uh, the role of public service media in climate change communication and their plans for COP21, which are very much uh, connected also with our plans. Joe Robertson will add uh, some specific uh, perspectives on uh, the topic of youth engagement and uh, the role music and arts can play in the context of citizens climate lobby and citizens climate engagement network. And we will have uh, youth perspectives. Uh, we are happy to have Maxim with us, uh, one of the conference of youth uh, co-organizers. And um, if we will have time, we will also screen a video message of Angela and Augustine, uh, who has, have been performing uh, at COP20 in Lima last year, and who are very strategic in their approach on how to use music uh, to get young people engaged in uh, climate change debate. So, uh, my name again, Miroslav Polza, International Association for the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges. It's a civil society organization based in Austria. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, this, uh, I have to turn around. It's the, our roll-up, so let's see also our uh, logo. This blog 
culture, this stands for Global Challenges, and this is a Global Challenges Action Network, which is transinstitutional, so it doesn't belong only to our organization, but any uh, institution or individual who wants to act uh, uh, in this uh, network uh, on global challenges, on uh, programs and goals of the United Nations system, in a, a formalized and uh, a strategic long-term perspective um, can do this in this um, network, which has been developed in the context of Rio plus 20 Global Youth Music Contest initiative uh, in the year 2012 and also Rio plus 20 issues cluster on innovation that I have been facilitating on behalf of major group NGOs uh, from the preparatory process for Rio plus 20 conference. Um, so, the Global Challenges Youth Music Contest, uh, the overall objective of this initiative is to engage young people in Global Challenges action in the context of goals and programs of the United Nations system through music, youth-focused narratives and innovative media partnerships. The particular aim of the initiative is to contribute to the success of COP21 by uh, offering a specific COP21 award and uh, through this uh, award uh, and this communication channel young people can uh, express their views and their ex expectations and ideas for a successful COP21 and uh, they can showcase uh, youth climate action and uh, with this uh, create uh, support and social momentum for COP21 negotiations and perhaps broaden also the perspectives to bring new ideas to the table. The organizers of Global Challenges Youth Music Contest are UNESCO Management of Social Transformation Program and uh, our organization IAI in cooperation with the UNFCCC Secretariat the World We Want 2015 online consultation platform and media partners like the European Broadcasting Union and additional partners like, for instance, the Citizens Climate Lobby uh, in the context of GYMC X activities, which I will tell you more about later. The scope of the initiative, on the one hand, it's an online competition and on the other hand, uh, a very important element of this outreach activity is uh, a globally broadcasted TV show which will be held during COP21 at UNESCO headquarters and um, this has really huge potentials. Uh, the initiative um, shall uh, explain uh, or bring this uh, whole COP21 process and the event closer to uh, the awareness of young people encourage them to think about what actions they can do or are doing or have done to combat climate change, invite them to produce music video clips about their vision of a sustainable world and upload it on the voting platform and uh, con uh, inspire others um, by watching the films and learning about the visions and actions of entrants uh, contribute uh, or participate in the online uh, voting or in the juries and there will be identified uh, two finalists or perhaps in the context of GYMCX initiative also some others uh, who will be then invited to Paris Climate Talks and to the TV show. Uh, yeah, so um, what makes this initiative uh, unique? It's the strong alignment with UN processes and uh, uh, strong cooperation uh, with the competent UN uh, agencies and uh, Mr. Uh, John Crawley will speak in his video message later about this. We have uh, very interesting and strong media partners, uh, particularly the European Broadcasting Union, which has an extraordinary reach and is also a leader in this uh, discussion how public service media can help communicate climate change. Uh, and we have Rocket Media, it's uh, also uh, communication uh, company that has a network of 6,000 broadcasters worldwide and they said they are guaranteeing us 500 broadcasting hours and 1.5 billion potential viewers uh, and uh, we have strong technology partners the platform that we are working with Global Rockstar is the world's leading organizer of online music competitions and uh, particularly important is that this concept has been tested already in the context of Rio plus 20 UN conference We've had there 313 submissions from 40 countries, a network, global network of uh, coordinators and partners who have spread the world 
and this is uh, key uh, and also uh, from this first round we have also partners like the National Youth Authority of Ghana and just today I received uh, the, uh, an email from the CEO of National Youth Authority of Ghana who said they will very strongly uh, promote this um, uh, initiative on their networks as they have 100 million young people in their databases who they will bring this initiative uh, to the, their attention. And it has also a high celebrities engagement potentials. We've been in uh, New York speaking with the uh, head of the outreach department there uh, who said that they are uh, uh, liaising with uh, celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio who will be in Paris and that uh, uh, it looks quite promising that uh, our TV show, if it uh, will be set up as planned, uh, would have the potential to um, uh, attract uh, these uh, celebrities to participate and through this even broadening the reach of media and everything. The two main awards are the uh, COP21 award and an Action 2015 award. The winners will uh, get uh, a, a ticket to come to Paris. That's the main uh, award, but there will certainly be also co-benefits uh, by uh, working uh, with uh, these public authorities that are our partners with media, etc. And perhaps even some global careers might start in the context of this initiative. And uh, what I mentioned already before is this GYMCX um, uh, dimension. Uh, that, like uh, many of you probably know TEDx, uh, this independently organized events of TED uh, ideas worth spreading. And this um, is uh, somehow bringing innovation space to the whole initiative because we cannot now plan uh, really uh, the cooperation with so many partners or so. But if we give uh, partners the opportunity to independently organize awards, uh, we uh, uh, somehow acknowledge that they are really our partners, but then uh, everything else is being done uh, by them. Independently through this, we will have very many winners and uh, also through this also very many happy people. Because we've seen in the first competition, some uh, young people have been so much uh, into this, they put so much effort and energy and even money, uh, financial resources into it, and then uh, only uh, two groups uh, got the ticket to Rio, and everybody else was disappointed. And then now we want to change this that uh, in partnership with local communities, in partnership with national authorities, in partnership with media companies, there can be awarded many more awards. Timeline, uh, as I've said before, on Wednesday we will launch it at a press conference here in Bonn. There, uh, on the 1st of July they will start the uploading. Uh, I can show you here a, a home page uh, how it looked like in the, uh, for the Rio Plus 20 competition. So it's glo uh, global uh, slash rockstar.net uh, was the platform. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, this, uh, then there will be uh, the first two months, uh, there will be already the opportunity to discuss uh, the videos and uh, we will then uh, form a jury who will pick uh, a selection of let's say 20 or 30 of these videos for the online voting uh, based on uh, the uh, uh, interest uh, these entries have spurred in terms of uh, discussions and also in order to have a global coverage of the initiative and then there will be online voting and the winners of the online voting will then be invited to the COP21 and uh, to the uh, TV show and uh, I'm looking forward to work with you on youth engagement COP21 by highlighting Youth climate action through music, and it's a particular honor. And uh, uh, we are happy and delighted that uh, Adriana from UNFCCC Secretary is also working with us on this initiative. That you are so open to this kind of innovative approaches and to create synergies. And uh, I would give you now the floor to uh, say how this connects with your work.
Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Miro, OSHA, as well the Association for the Invitation to participate today in this side event, and as well to be supporting the global music competition. As you may know, it is an effort to showcase youth action through music, and especially what is happening in all levels, at local, national, and international level. The Doha World Program on Article 6 of the Convention was adopted by parties in 2012, and this program is uh, promoting the activities on Article 6 that are related to education, training, public awareness, public access to information, public participation, and international cooperation. Music is one excellent alternative to raise awareness, but as well to mobilize action. For that, uh, UNFCCC with UNESCO will support this initiative by showcasing in our newsroom. You have seen that we have the newsroom with different articles as well through the social media. And during the Jana Future Generation Day, that every day, every call takes place the first Thursday in the first week, we will um, as well showcase the, the winners. What is happening here regarding Article 6 of the Convention? As you may know, tomorrow and on uh, Wednesday, we will have the, the third dialogue on Article 6 of the Convention that focuses on education and international cooperation, the first session, and the third on training and international cooperation. Also, this space will be an opportunity to showcase how civil society organization, how youth leaders are working to raise awareness, to work on education, and to generate a transformation. Uh, as well, we will have this year a launch event of the Global Video Competition. It is a network of the UNFCCC in partnership with the Young Framework Initiative on Children and Youth for Climate Change and other UN partners and TVE. It will be launched uh, this Friday and uh, in a press conference as well. All of you will be invited. And all of this is our effort to highlight actions through music, with the uh, music competition led by OSHA and by Miro, and also through videos. And I would like to encourage young leaders to participate in these two com uh, global competitions, and also to transmit your voices, your message, through the music, to the art, to the videos. And uh, with this, we will also participate, we'll be very glad to participate as well in the press conference and to continue coordinating. I think that the, during the Jana Future Generation Day on the 3rd of uh, December, the idea is also to showcase sort of the winners and to present uh, as well in our website. Then, congratulations for this effort and we look forward to continue working with all of you. Thank you very much, Adriana. Very wonderful to work with you. Uh, I would, uh, our main partner here also is um, the uh, United Nations Manage uh, UNESCO uh, Management of Social Transformation Program. Uh, John Crawley is there, the head, and, but unfortunately he has his uh, uh, meeting of the governing board of his uh, program in Paris, so he cannot be with us. But uh, in order to have him virtually present, I will show you uh, his uh, statement at the uh, COP21 Youth and uh, Media Alliance building workshop from the 24th of April, where he explained how much effort we have put into aligning really our work with the different processes and the, the different initiatives. So here is John Crawley. To say we would like to have a youth song contest at uh, the, the award ceremony at COP21 connected to um, uh, debate, mobilizations, and uh, feedback from uh, social activities is one thing. How to make it happen is, of course, a matter of commitment, imagination, creativity. It's also a matter of lining up institutional mechanisms, of which there are many, and they're quite complex. So perhaps one of the main things that uh, we as a UN agency can help contribute to is uh, putting in place a coherent institutional approach. And this institutional approach has uh, several distinct uh, dimensions. First, I have to mobilize UNESCO. I mean, UNESCO has its own 
mechanisms and rules, that's my job. Um, it's not always easy uh, because there is a constant flood of ideas, and to get noticed among the flood of ideas requires um, specific internal action. That doesn't need any insight. In addition, we have to um, um, connect to one another two distinct processes about COP21. First of all, COP21 is the conference of the parties from the UN Convention, Framework Convention on Climate Change. In that sense, uh, COP21 is run by the Secretariat of the Convention. The host country is simply the host. This is true even in a very literal legal sense. I don't know if you know this, it's quite interesting. The uh, conference venue is, for the duration of the conference, extra territorial. It is UN territory. It is actually policed by UN security personnel, not by the French police. It's quite interesting when you think about it. If anything goes wrong, it will be fascinating to examine the jurisdictional, legal, and other uh, implications. Um, so, to make things happen, even if they're not physically on the conference side, we need to work with the Secretariat of the Convention, which is the UN body charged with making COP21 so as we already indicated, we've been doing this for some time already. And um, I myself have had two working meetings, one in Lima uh, back in December, one uh, in France a few weeks ago, uh, with, uh, with uh, one of the people who works in the communication outreach unit, uh, responsible for Article 6 of the Convention, which deals with education, public awareness, uh, participation, and other related issues, to ensure that they know about what we're doing, like the idea in general, and will provide relevant uh, institutional support. This, in principle, is already a key. We have reached the point of what we could say, and I had a telephone discussion yesterday to check what I was authorized to say this morning. We could reach the point where we could say that um, the Secretariat supports this idea, will uh, allow it to use uh, relevant uh, label, logo, and so on relating to COP21 from the perspective of the Convention Secretariat and we'll be happy to cooperate operationally, particularly if we want to do something connected to our main event 5th of December on the 3rd of December, which will be due for Future Generations Day at the conference venue. And furthermore, they will be happy to discuss how they might associate themselves more formally with the events on the 5th of December once we have a detailed plan. So this is very promising. Uh, and uh, allows us to say that we are working within the official framework of uh, COP21 as a UN event. At the same time, COP21 is a French event. Or more precisely, the Conférence Marie-Claude is a major French event, of which COP21 in the UN sense is just one component. And in order to uh, do what we want to do, we also have to connect the French processes. And of course, we have been discussing with the French COP21 Secretariat, which has different functions and responsibilities than the UN COP21 Secretariat, though they collaborate closely, in order to ensure that we are known, recognized, and in due course supported. The point we're at for the moment is that we are known. And one of the reasons why I'm so grateful for having the participation both of the Departmental Council and of the National Commission is that this is part of the necessary process of building um, relations with the French institutions responsible for COP21 so as to ensure that what we're doing is not just UN. It has to be UN, it has to be French. So this is a rather complex institutional process, but basically it's my job to deal with it. So uh, now we you've heard also John Crawley who is a very important uh, person and partner in this uh, preparation of the Global Challenger Youth Music Contest. And uh, so you see it's really uh, a quite sophisticated concept uh, that really wants to connect uh, with the official structures and create synergies with everybody else who has the mandate to work in this field. And, uh, but in order to have really the impact, uh, we have in addition also to getting really connected with uh, young people. Uh, welcome. Uh, 
we, uh, we have to have the buy-in of the media. And uh, here I would like to show you now the uh, video message of uh, Mike Moulin from Eurovision, uh, European Broadcasting Union, who has the potential and the networks to bring our efforts uh, to a global audience. Hello everyone, my name is Mike Mullane and I work for the Eurovision arm of the European Broadcasting Union, the world's foremost association of public service media. Our members see an important part of their role in terms of providing uh, their audiences, citizens, with the facts and figures they need in order to be able to make informed decisions and form judgments. That's why we see the whole COP21 process uh, climate change, sustainability as key issues, and that's why we'll be, uh, our members will be covering uh, uh, these issues in depth later this year. For our part, we have plans to produce a Eurovision debate, hopefully from UNESCO headquarters in Paris uh, on the 4th or 5th of December. And that's also why I'm delighted to be uh, uh, talking to, uh, working with uh, uh, Miro, to help him with his plans for the 2015 GYMC TV show, which I believe has a huge potential in terms of uh, uh, reaching a much younger uh, audience with, uh, with information about this, uh, this crucial process. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but uh, uh, I've told me earlier that uh, uh, he can share my contact details if anyone has uh, any questions that they'd like to, to ask. I wish you all a very good and fruitful meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. And uh, I'm delighted that we have uh, uh, with us also Mr. Nick Nutter, the head of UNFCCC Outreach or Communications Department. And um, if you would like to comment on anything, you are always welcome to take the floor. Thank you. Uh, we are also in contact with the office of the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Youth and Ms. Hazami Barmada, a social entrepreneur and communications consultant of this office, uh, had the intention to connect with us, but uh, they have their some weather issues and uh, somehow we couldn't establish the Skype uh, connection, but she said she will uh, produce a video message uh, within the next hours and it will be available also on our YouTube channel. And uh, with this uh, we come to Joe Robertson uh, and uh, please uh, take the floor and say how these efforts connect with your efforts for COP21. Thank you, Miriam. Um, so I'm going to talk about something a little bit sort of in parallel, which is creating synergies and making connections, allowing people to engage how that works with the global youth music uh, context. So part of this is about people's voices and whether those voices are in the room or not. Um, one of the big questions about whether we get a good outcome is whether all of the right ideas were discussed, whether they were all heard by everybody who's in a position to make decisions and those decisions were being made in a way where the, the process for choosing the right ideas was open was um, inclusive and was allowed to move forward without necessarily um, giving too much influence to the wrong actors. And so what we do in Citizens Climate Lobby is we find um, citizen volunteers who want to work together in teams and want to build relationships with their own elected officials. We provide them with ongoing support and education. Um, there's no cost or anything for that. They then become the people who are in the room the people who talk to their own governments about what needs to happen. Um, and they don't go in there just to tell people what to do, they go in there to actually learn from the people who represent them and also educate the people who represent them. So there's a, a two-way relationship and eventually these citizen volunteers really become part of the policy team. Um, most people in government don't have a staff that is unlimited or where they can simply tap into knowledge from everywhere. There's a limited amount of time, there's a limited amount of people working on a wide range of things, and so that process allows us to get citizens' voices in the room. Um, we created the Pathway to Paris project that you see uh, behind me in order to try to bring that kind of coordinating strategy into the UN process. 
And so that can be done informally by building networks of civil society advocates, citizens outside the process, volunteers putting their time and energy into what Miroslav and the Global Challenges Action Network call um, a process of being an auxiliary engine that, that allows you to support good outcomes. Um, so this is about building direct engagement opportunities, um, local understanding, and advocating for policies that are going to actually succeed because they achieve the building of local value, not just specific targets that specific people decided on once upon a time, but, but something that's going to be locally relevant in an ongoing way and is going to keep magnifying the value of those policy outcomes as time goes on. Um, so one of the outcomes we're working towards is the establishment of a citizens' climate engagement network, where in partnership with the UN Millennium Campaign, the World We Want platform, the Global Challenges Action Network, IAAI, and others, um, we would actually be able to provide not just the kind of training and support that Citizens Climate Lobby does, and not just an opportunity for consultation and the visualization of, of contributions, but actually an ongoing means of direct engagement in the policy process by anyone from anywhere. Um, and that, that can actually allow a lot of interesting outcomes. That can allow us to achieve ongoing review at very little cost, if any, um, to governments or to anyone else involved in the process. People have eyes, they have voices, they have political rights, and we can mobilize that energy and that um, goodwill to actually get a better outcome. And so, there are different ways that can be built into the process. There's the World We Want platform. There's the Global Challenges Action Network. There are networks of cities that are working to find ways to achieve local engagement where you actually are able to show what happens when local governments take action in a positive way. Um, there's the Global Youth Music Contest itself, which is a way to actually raise people's voices and raise awareness. And so in collaborating with something like the Global Youth Music Contest, you can actually have action-focused outcomes where there's this event, there are people bringing their voices forward, explaining why these things are good, explaining why outcomes should be you know, good for the climate, good for democratic participation, good for the economy, sustainable development, etc. Um, but then they can also actually take specific actions to follow through and to become part of the process overall. Um, motivating a, a more ambitious outcome. So that's the kind of thing that we're working on and that's how we're partnering and um, we want to see, I guess, more and more engagement happening in all these different ways. Youth coming into the process, catalyzing action, and of course, you know, the Conference of Youth is another way in which that kind of thing happens and our vision is that all these different pieces fit together. No one replaces the others. They actually all are part of a fabric of action. Thank you very much, Joe. It's uh, delighting to work with you. So, Hello, my name is. <laughs> you, uh, you agree, uh, uh, my team, I want to show first uh, uh, August and uh, Angela because it's really inspiring how these young people see uh, these potentials of uh, global changes, youth music contest and youth engagement through music for COP21. It's Augustine and I am from Switzerland. And my name is Angela and I'm from Chile. And we are both members of Virtual Friends. And we are very thankful for this space where we can talk about our ideas and projects regarding COP21. Exactly. We are very excited to hear also what you have to say, what your ideas are, and to see how we can collaborate with one another to build this movement, this cultural and artistic movement around the COP21. Our organization, Earth and Records, is a student-led organization at College of the Atlantic in Maine that works on climate issues, climate change issues, um, both locally and globally. It has been especially involved in international spaces of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, UNFCCC, um, and has taken the position of climate justice and works to contribute to that movement. We want to translate this difficult language of the United Nations into something that is more understandable for people and make international politics work for people. Exactly. So for that we have used music. And last year in the COP20 in Lima, we came with this song, Hombre de Papel, Man of Paper, and we sang it. 
for the youth and intergenerational day. Uh, this was heard by members of the civil society, delegations, and the secretariat, and it was a wonderful experience because we realized that this song was a unifying force within all these members of the society, and we believe and we experience how music can transform a topic so complex and overwhelming as climate change and transform it into something beautiful, something engaging, something, something hopeful, where we have the agency and the power to, to act. And for this, we have three main objectives. The first one is to keep building on our knowledge on what we know about climate change, the new agreement and the UN frequency processes, so we can take all this information and translate it into music, so it can reach more people. So that's our second objective, to create more songs, so people can they get not just informed about what is happening and the relevance of climate change, but also to unify so we can work together towards the changes. And working together with other artists as well and with organizations is our third objective. And, and, and creating networks, con connecting with other people so that we can really have this global movement grow and, and see how the international space can make local activism strong. I enjoyed it very much to hear them and uh, to really see uh, how strongly they are inspired uh, by this kind of topics. Uh, Maxim, would you like to take the floor and uh, to say how this connects with the preparations of a uh, conference of youth and your personal perspectives perhaps? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so the, the idea is to, so traditionally we will end uh, 2015 this year by COP21 and before that there usually is a big gathering of young people for the Pride Conference of Youth so it's not been 21 years that there's a Pride but only 11 but uh, in 11 years there's been something that has been emerging and building together through young people and uh, the, the, the concept behind this 11th Conference of Youth is to try to, now that we have uh, an idea and something that is emerging among youth, to have to go to something a little bit broader. So that's uh, exactly in the spirit that was discussed before by the, that now we have to have more outreach. So it can be television as we discussed before. And our idea was to say that we have to go global and to uh, create an event that will not only gather people that have the opportunity to fly to Paris, but uh, to reach as much as possible. So, uh, COIL, uh, the Levens COIL, will be the, an event that will try to uh, make local and have uh, local events in parallel that will be connected to the, to the Paris or uh, event. And uh, to make sure that we have a really inclusive approach we are trying to figure out uh, new ways of uh, communicating and discussing together uh, since we all know that with uh, cultural and uh, generational differences it can be harder to simply have, uh, I would say, conferences formats. So music is one thing we are really uh, interested in looking at. So in Paris we'll be building a concert around uh, this concept about fighting the effects of climate change and uh, all over the world, the world our idea is to make it uh, have uh, this inclusivity of people to have the opportunity to gain access to a local event and an event that really bring them uh, the feeling of living something global so we there will be strong connections between all the events which means that uh, Paris will not be the center of the world but the whole world will be Canada Center, so we can have speakers from anywhere in the world have, that have, can have their talk uh, broadcasted to the other events. And in the same way, we don't only want to broadcast uh, talks from, I would say, important or key figures in the, um, in the world, but also to have the, the youth to build something together. Uh, we are, don't know yet exactly if we keep on the, working on a statement, 
And the first why is also to uh, bring visibility to all the actions that are today that are uh, being developed by use all over the world. Uh, most of these are local actions, which doesn't mean that they're not important, it means that they are very adapted to the to their context. And uh, bringing visibility to these actions can go through this connection between the events and also helps us to uh, exchange networks, ideas, and to show basically that the, the youth today is uh, is ready to embrace these new issues and uh, is also ready to try to have a broader outreach than we used to have uh, before. And so the, this event will take place from 26th to 28th, so just before COP21, and uh, we, we are seeking to have as much as communication between those two events to make, uh, to make sure that we can build something together that makes sense. Oh. Thank you very much. It's really excellent, uh, these innovative approaches and uh, a lot of synergy potentials. Ariana, you have some other obligations, <laughs> perhaps some concluding remarks. Yes, I wanted to say that uh, we invite you tomorrow to take part in the third dialogue on Article 6 of the Convention that will focus on education and international cooperation and on the third that will focus on training and international cooperation. As well, we will be participating in the lunch event on Wednesday, and it is an invitation to young people to showcase their action to this uh, music competition, to the video competition, and to transform at local level to this action. Then thank you very much, and we look forward to continue working with you. Thank you very much, Adriana. And with this, the formal presentation part is uh, uh, concluded and we can now enter the discussion part if somebody... <laughs> yes, please. Please, could you uh, come here to uh, speak in the microphone because we are also recording it. Oh, okay. uh, oh it's not very really <laughs> Yes, Work, okay. uh, and uh, we are also participating in the European Action uh, 2015 network in the conference calls that are there We've informed about the initiative and uh, yeah so it's okay. uh, so shall build on this network yeah. yeah because I was thinking that would be a perfect opportunity to build on with the mm, sustainable development goals as well that kind of all ties in together exactly. and that wider network um, and then also, I was wondering, like, on a practical level, like, how do you have, you have these two awards, but how do they link? How do, sorry, how do they kind of, how are you going to judge them? And are there certain criteria, or is this kind of all? Um, there will be on the submission uh, side, uh, people will have to, the opportunity to say that they are running for this or that uh, award. So they could also say they are running for both uh, categories and uh, then uh, there is this uh, online voting and um, well, uh, the ones who in the different categories get the most votes mm -hmm. and if uh, one would be the best for both uh, could uh, somehow theoretically win both awards but I don't know. But for each award, for those two awards, are they geared towards different kind of categories or are, you just, are they just general awards and they can go to anything? The idea is that uh, we want to integrate these UN processes in one communication channel because on uh, the level of United Nations these are separate processes mm -hmm. with separate communication structures but uh, for the young people on the street, it's irrelevant. They don't want to hear and uh, are trying to understand uh, so many different processes. They want to really see how uh, get an, 
uh, idea how what they are doing locally and could do locally relates to these global goals and uh, how to, they could uh, get engaged. Uh, and uh, therefore, we want to integrate the climate uh, agenda and the sustainable development agenda. And, and okay, so they're very general um, awards there. Yeah, it's, it's then, very general. Yeah. Um, one oh, yeah, two other questions. Another practical thing is I don't completely get how this or understand how the TV show will kind of work and how that can be effective in because it sounds like you know a great exciting idea. I'm just uh, uh, I suppose that's gonna be, that's a challenge to make it um, I don't know um, directly relating to and relevant to COP and everything kind of. I'm just wondering. If it's well, maybe, I mean I'll let Miro answer the specifics of how the event itself will happen, but. Something I was hoping to get a chance to say, and so you just gave me a, an easy way to do it, is that you know, in a meeting that I was just in with the Climate Action Network in Paris last week, there have been conversations about how do you get people from all over the world to pay attention to something that most people aren't that well informed about, and where there's a lot of very esoteric policy detail to try to come to understand. And so what we've been thinking about with a network of partners is, you know, what if we could create a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, global news network live from Paris for 12 days that would provide the same kind of education and constant viewing that you get when the Olympics are happening, something like that. And where you would have civil society advocates, youth leaders, artists, able to share their perspective all in the same venue and not through the management of, of media that are focused on who the audience is or how much they can make from this particular project, but through uh, the management of civil society advocates um, and the public broadcasters, for instance. Um, if we can put that together, and there's certainly just floating around this venue more than enough content and ideas and, and even creativity to, to provide the programming for that whole thing. But then if we could actually bring in people from around the world, bring in local meetings, the insights that come from places where things are happening, whether they're good things or bad things, climate impacts or solutions, um, then we have a way to actually produce a much broader amount of consciousness about what's happening in Paris and why it relates to people everywhere. And make sure that it's not just Paris that's the center of the world for two weeks, but that the world is actually starting to connect in that way. And so I think that this, this major global broadcast that's going to bring the creativity of, of young musicians into the lives of people everywhere, that's part, that's what it's doing. It's providing an opportunity for contact, for engagement, for learning about something in a way that's not going to require you to have a doctoral degree to understand it. Um, and that's gonna motivate people to actually engage and take action in the future. So I think that's yeah. my interpretation of why it would why it can work. Okay. So and is is everything kind of is it, is it still in the works or is everything kind of sorted, planned out, or is it very open? And in terms of questions of it's people open. looking at this, would people be able to get involved and give their input in terms of yeah. in the planning? If I uh, may here uh, provide some additional information, so uh, if you would like to know more about the details, you could also uh, look up our homepage, glotcha.info. There is also in the news section you will find the link to the COP21 Youth and Media Alliance Building Workshop, where we have started this uh, cooperation. There is also uh, a link to the uh, to our YouTube uh, uh, playlist also. And here, for instance, uh, the uh, EBU representative has explained how they have uh, worked last year on an Eurovision debate. Because as uh, he told, there will be two uh, events that uh, EBU will support. Uh, the most important thing, their own event will be an Eurovision debate about climate change and COP21. And uh, the other one will be our usual, the 
uh, debate will run on the main uh, news channels of the members of European Broadcasting Union and our uh, event will be on the youth and entertainment channels of the members and will be also offered globally for free and that's also an important uh, point that there will be no discrimination uh, among those who can afford a such a broadcasting such a show or not and uh, yeah and uh, being in the youth and uh, entertainment channels um, it will have uh, to be entertaining <laughs> and yeah. uh, what exactly it will be and also uh, Mike Moulin is from the social media department of uh, European Broadcasting Union so his uh, field is this innovative part of cross media how to uh, ask people to tweet uh, or uh, to go uh, online voting so that there's interaction during the show also and uh, there will be engagement opportunities and also possibilities to Post question or even in the weeks before the event uh, that the question uh, for instance for this uh, debate in the European Parliament they have done it that they uh, gave the uh, audience the opportunity to prepare the questions so your name was again oh, okay. oh, Adam Any further questions or comments? Okay. If everything is clear, then we look forward and I hope also to, for fruitful cooperation with your work. Uh, I think we have a lot in common. <laughs> so, see you then in on internet we will see <laughs> your videos. I'm looking forward to see and hear and then in Paris. And also if you have time, Wednesday at 9.30, it is in the press conference room and I hope in the official launch, everybody kindly invited. <laughs> the, the, the press conference is uh, live web broadcasted, so it's locally available. Okay. Um, right.